Seth Kaplan is managing partner of Airline Weekly. Seth, I know everyone wants to say airline costs are out of control, but I've, I've looked through historical data, and even with baggage fees and all the other stupid charges we're getting now, they do overall, I know it's an unpopular thing to say, seem to be lower than 10 or 15 years ago. Is that fact or fiction? Yeah, it's, it's mostly fact, Brian. You know, people ask me, you know, why haven't airfares fallen because of, of you know, cheaper fuel? And, and you, you kind of have to say, well, even the premise there that, that airfares haven't fallen, not really historically true. Now, look, if you want to start history in 2009, you know, when, when demand was very low and, and a lot of people just couldn't afford to fly at all, no matter how cheap it was, yes. Compared to then, it has risen, really the first time in history that we've had several years now of inflation-adjusted airfare rises. But, but compared to almost any other time in history, still a pretty good deal, even if you count that extra $20 or so on average that people pay in, in those hated fees. Yeah, I know, and there seems to be a recency bias with a lot of things. But again, we, I had plenty of time at the airport I was at pretty much all weekend long to talk about the airlines, their problems. I'm not defending them. They have a lot of problems. But people are flying now a cross-country round trip for 375 400 bucks, maybe 500 with baggage fees. You go back and inflation adjust that data, it was well higher than that 10 or 15 or 20 years ago. Exactly. For almost all of history, it was higher. You know, again, you really just sort of have to thread the needle and say, well, what about five, six, seven years ago? And 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 yeah, hey, I mean, I'm a consumer, too. I buy airline tickets just like everybody else. Right. And sure, I long for the days when I could fly across the country for even cheaper than it is now. And, you know, there was a point where you could be just the most minimal elite and get upgraded and all of that. That was great for a consumer. But the problem was that almost every American airline went bankrupt in the process. So, you know, if you're going to say it's your inalienable right to, to travel, you know, on below cost air fares, you basically have to go knock on the door of your neighbor who's a pilot or a flight attendant and tell them that you want to go back to the days when they were getting furloughed, they were losing their retirement to subsidize your cheap trip to, to Disney World. You, know, so you kind of have to balance yeah. all that in a pretty good equilibrium, historically speaking. Decent okay, deal, so, but sustainable airline. So here's yeah. the question I have for you that I promised all the people on the plane this weekend that I would ask somebody because they wanted someone to listen. Third canceled flight for me in two months for mechanical reason. I'm not going to single out the airline because, Seth, they all have it, okay? Here's the issue. Are airlines making, and, and the stocks are up and their profitability is up, why don't they seem to be reinvesting more in making the experience a little better? My flight was canceled, and this is literally true, because somebody stole the exit sign off the exit door in the plane, a little six-by-two piece of plastic. Someone took it off, maybe put it in their pocket as a souvenir, caused us to cancel the flight. The airline didn't have another one around, so we couldn't leave until the next day. We had screaming babies. People missed Easter. Why aren't the airlines reinvesting more of these profits into making flying at least a semi-human experience? Yeah, when you hear a story like that, it almost makes you think, God, it's, it's amazing it ever works, right, Brian? It, it, you know, as long as, we, as long as we land safely, that's the, ultimately, oh, the only thing we care about. But they could do a little right. more. They could do a little more. Right. And, and they're doing, and certainly, you know, the industry is safer than it's ever been. Even if statistically speaking, it is rather reliable, too, in historical terms. And you know, if you take an airline like, like Delta, which was farther down the road, they kind of turned their profits around sooner. They did make some of those reinvestments in their, you know, and, and no, no surprise that they're kind of at the top of the industry right now in reliability. You look at American having more recently gone through a merger, they're turning the corner, not quite at those Delta levels. So, yeah, you'd hope that as time goes on, they they get more toward that. United is one that it, you know has struggled in recent years, <clears throat> doing better than it was, but still not quite where you'd hope it would be, no question. No, and not calling anybody out, but you might have mentioned it with the last one. Seth, thank you very much. <laughs> Appreciate it. <laughs>